Dylan has an incredible perspective and a love of words. He's described that he always loved words, but didn't have a way to get them out. Dylan seemed to be developing really typically. He was starting to develop language and he was referring to me as Ami and dad as Dida. And we didn't really notice anything particularly different in his development. Somewhere as he was approaching his second birthday, we noticed that he was speaking less and frustrated more. Shortly after that, we started to have some suspicions about autism. The early years of my life just were so taken from me. No one outside my family believed I was capable. Kind of like living stuck in between the therapists and teachers who could not see me, and my family who had the love and belief in my mind even when they could not communicate with me. There was a lot of guessing. There was a lot of wondering. Everything that he showed on the outside would absolutely lead us to believe that he didn't understand and that he was going to need very, very basic communication, really simplified learning. So he was stuck and he didn't know if there was ever going to be a chance for him to come out. I would love to believe that I knew my son better than anyone and that I knew everything about him. I would love to tell you that but I didn't. For 12 years, I didn't get to know him. And he didn't get to ask questions, and he didn't get to share with us. First, it starts with somebody saying, I believe in you. I'm gonna find these strategies, and we're gonna practice them and practice them. And then you're gonna be able to eventually type them onto something that will allow us to hear your voice. Having the opportunity to try to type the thoughts in my mind happened early on in fifth grade, when slowing my mind took enormous effort to find the real thoughts that I wanted to share. I learned to control my mind the way I needed to find the one letter in all the alphabet that was the exact match with my word that I needed to type. So in the school setting, Dylan was not encouraged to spend time in general education for academic reasons. They were waiting for him to be able to show that he was learning ready before they would give him more time in that setting. And it wasn't until seventh grade when we had a changeover in our support and we were able to work more collaboratively on that communication system. And he's now on a path to a high school diploma. Always when a person meets me, I am determined, like resolute warriors, to destroy the false belief that having autism and no voice means failure to have a thinking mind. And when that happens, recklessness in lives of autistic individuals takes over. When he shares these thoughts and sees the reactions that people have, he feels empowered. He says, I can't believe that I am in a place now where people actually want to hear what I have to say. I might be able to convince some people that there are others besides me that still need to have a chance to communicate the way I am communicating. Always the first time that a person meets me, a definite impact and impression is permanently formed in their mind. Because of the way I look, and the way I move in somewhat strange ways, you all are right now making hard decisions about me, and others who are like me. And the real problem is not that you are doing this, it's that you have been told that we are not able to think, love or talk like you. Because you view me this way, with your belief in an all-knowing medical system, is the reason I slave in this current place. The medical community is a powerful voice that has incredible influence on families trying to find answers to the autism puzzle. Go on and think about all the things you have been taught in the education you were given, and then take it out of your mind, 
and push the limits on your perceptions of autism beyond what it is that you see, and look at all of us in another mindset. I am so ready to let the world know that they are all wrong about my certain kind of autism. Medicine's knowledge of us is like the caveman period in time. I am sorry, but all the medical books are like a ring feeling wet in their beliefs about autism. Caring about us starts with having a divorce from your views about all of us kept in isolation because of people's supposed understanding of autism. Yes, I am autistic. It's a part of me. A hard way to be in this world with a certain perspective. From the start, the goal of many of the professionals I saw was to see behavior therapists to make our lives better. Behavior therapy works to address my outward movements, noises and skills. Being autistic easily affects my ability to make my movements intentional with my thoughts. Too many times I was asked to do the simplest things. Gathering certain shapes, for example, being a common skill taught in such programs. But when I moved to sort, only autism controlled my hands. My mind could try all it wanted, but it was impossible. Finding myself in this impossible place pushed me further into autism and almost killed my spirit. To my family, the therapists trained their minds to see this as the intention and understanding I lacked. However, always my mother thanked them, but knew they were not right. Unheard minds, again and again, lose so much hope since we are expected to amount to little more than silly trials of therapies meant to help handle our needs, instead of first believing in us more. Finally I met an Austin woman who had the courage to look these assumptions in the face, and started me on the amazing journey of learning to control not only my body, but also my mind, so I could spell the thoughts I always had. It has been the normal thing to think that minds considered almost infant-like could not possibly spell such thoughtful, heartfelt words. Many people dread the idea that we could actually exist in many numbers, because no one visualizes us this way, with thinking minds intact. Having a voice leaves hard questions for people to answer. People do not want to think that they have been so wrong for so long, which makes it hard to really see me, and others like me. Day in and day out I deal with all of these challenges. Believe me, I get it why people have such a hard time with this. All I ask is that you try to have an open mind to ideas that defy existing ones. We are all ignorant if we are only staying dead in our own ideas. It's not enough to imagine we might exist. We are real to those who are forceful and determined to fight against the existing belief that autism is a major catastrophic mental deficit that exists in all of us without a voice. There are so many of us, and it's time to listen to our message, and include us in our own therapies and learning paths. It's time to get to the next phase in autism treatment. I know that it's a lot of work, but all of us have the potential to make amazing progress together. Having someone fighting for your right to give you a voice is the greatest feeling that anyone could have. To march among these kinds of people is to me, a great honor. Thank you.